Yet again, another prophetic perspective. Today I have Lee Brainerd, a good friend. Many of you all are familiar with Lee. Thank you for joining again. Glad to be here, Brother Tim. Well, you're always welcome at the Lamb and Lion Ministries, whether it's on Christ and Prophecy or pro Prophetic Perspective. Today we're at the pre-trib conference and you were actually a speaker. So what did you speak on as one of the featured speakers? Well, I demonstrated from the writings of Irenaeus and from the Didache that we not only had a clear pre-tribulation rapture testimony in the early church, the first two centuries, but we had a very clear, robust dispensationalism. We certainly did. You know, just this last weekend, it, we're recording in December, on the first Sunday of Advent, I heard a testimony by Cyril of Jerusalem of his expectation of the Lord's second Advent, even as he was celebrating the first one, and this was in the third and fourth century. Yeah, that's right. So this stuff survived the aggressive actions of replacement theology and the allegorizing methodology, it survived up into the fourth and fifth centuries. Well, it certainly did. You know, Lee, we've talked before, but just for our viewers today, how did you come to have a passion for Bible prophecy and how has it invigorated your own faith and your discipleship in Christ? Well, as a young believer, when I was in the Ranger Battalion in 1980, uh, uh, my roommate discovered I didn't have a Bible. He said, you not had me? Went and took me to the bookstore and bought me a, a King James <laughs> Study Bible, Dake's Annotated Reference Bible. Now that's a good uh, buddy soldier right yeah. there. I'll tell you what, that's great. And so I started reading that Bible and before long, my life was revolutionized. And the deeper I got into this, the more I saw, we know why we're here. We know where we came from. We know what we're supposed to be doing. We know how we're supposed to live and we know where we're going. We know the past, the present, the future. Who else in the world knows that? No. And that's where I got into prophecy. We know it's coming and well, it's good. And it is good. You know, as we, again, are here at the tail end of 2023, there's a lot of things happening in the world that, that most people say are not good. Uh, a rise in wickedness and lawlessness, a, a rise in, in just hatred as we've seen manifest in Israel. And yet, as Christians, as followers of Christ, our faith should not be shaken. We know these things will happen, and so That's it's right. just a, yet another affirmation of the validity of God's Word. Amen. And what I like to encourage people with, we see the world getting darker and darker around us. Dark clouds are gathering for an awful storm. But for the believer with the eye of faith, Every dark cloud has a silver lining. And the silver lining here is these are mileposts that tell us the coming of the Lord Jesus is getting near. The milepost, oh, I like that analogy. In other words, when you see a milepost, you don't stop and say, hey, let's just stop and hang out at this milepost. It's a, a sign, an indication that as we go forward, we are nearing our destination. Absolutely. All right. Well, I've made the point, Lee, you and I are not prophets in our own right, yep. but we can read the Word of God. We can, can try to understand what is becoming more clear day by day. And so God has revealed things right. He wants us to understand. Casting a gaze forward through the lens of Scripture, what do you see as some of the next events or things to come to pass in our world if the Lord tarries calling the church home? Well, on the technology side, we are definitely going to see the digital currency, the digital passports. If, if the rapture doesn't happen, they're going to be rolled out. We're going to have to go through that ugliness. Uh, other things that we see, we see the, um, the global hegemony of, uh, or the attempted global hegemony of the Russia, Turkey, Iran. They're trying to not only dominate the Middle East and Europe, they're trying to bully their way and, and force China to go their way, force America to go their way, force the world to go their way. This is going to come to a head when they try and invade Israel. And that is going to be a time when God is going to demonstrate that He is the one calling the shots, not Russia, not America, not China. You know, it's funny you mentioned those three nations. Uh, Many Americans have such a short memory span. We think back uh, perhaps all the way to the late 1970s when the, the Shah was deposed in Iran and of course our own uh, embassy employees were taken hostage. But prior to the Ayatollah returning to Iran and turning it into just an Islamic state, Iran was one of the few allies of Israel That's right. in the Middle East. They provided all their oil. Uh, Turkey was an ally to Israel until just recent memory. And just a few years ago, 
uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton went to Russia to offer them a Great Reset button. We talk about the Great Reset. She wanted to reset a, a friendly relationship between the United States and Russia, and yet how quickly all three of those nations have turned That's away right. from any kind of friendliness to the West, away from any alliance with Israel, and they're coalescing into an axis of evil that the Bible says will be the coalition that forms the Gog Magog. So we're not saying that war is, is right on the doorstep, right. but it is coming. Yep, the geopolitical chessboard is being set. Well put. Well, Lee, what can our viewers do uh, if they look around and would be tempted to be anxious or fearful? How can they have the same kind of exuberant hope and confidence that you have? Well, I think one of the things that we need to understand is as a believer, we have the opportunity to have joy residing in us that's wrought by the Word of God and the Spirit of God, the power of God, joy the world cannot give us and cannot take away. And I think this is part of the maturity that we have the privilege of maturing into is that as a believer, the world can come, they can throw us in prison, they can throw us in a FEMA camp, they can take our life, they can take our treasure, they can take our possessions, they can take our physical life, but they cannot take Jesus from our heart, they cannot take our hope or our joy. So we need to have the joy that, or the peace that passes understanding. Amen. And even though we have troubles in the world all around us, in our hearts, Amen. we are not troubled. So there's times when I feel the storm around me ruffling and I feel my exterior self getting a little ruffled and I just have to look to the Lord and say, okay, Lord, we need Jesus to calm another storm. Uh, amen. You know what, if you're enduring a storm in your life today, or you feel like the world is swirling around you, just amen. as Lee said, we would encourage you to keep your eyes on Christ. When amen. Peter took his eyes off the Lord, he began to sink. He saw the wind and the waves and the spray. But if you keep your eyes on Christ, you can stand and walk above even the waves themselves. Amen. Well, Lee, obviously, you're a long-standing dear friend. We look forward to you coming back again uh, on location at Maranatha Acres. But, brother, we look forward to all the, the study that you're going to be sharing as you uncover even more revelation from the past 2,000 years on how the early church fathers had an expectation of the Lord's soon return and that it would happen before the tribulation. Amen. Godspeed, Lee. Amen, brother.